Identifying her took 55 years. Now, all they need to know is who killed her. Hello, true crimeers. This is the case of Dorothy Gay Howard. Viewer discretion is advised. It was April 8th, 1954, just outside of Boulder, Colorado. About eight miles east of the city along the banks of Boulder Creek, a couple of individuals found a body just sort of at the bottom of this creek bed. At first, because they were younger, they thought, oh, this is, must be a store mannequin, but they weren't sure. And so they would run to town, because this is obviously before cell phones, to notify the sheriff. And a sheriff's deputy went out there with them. He was kind of skeptical at first, but then he looked down and sure enough, he saw what looked like a body or maybe a mannequin. And upon closer inspection, this was definitely not a mannequin. This was the nude body of a deceased woman. She had been badly beaten, it appeared, and there was evidence that she may have been tied up at one point. There was no clothing found with her. There was no identification, no wallet. There was absolutely nothing found with her. And they had no clue who she was. All they knew was that she was murdered. The coroner said that, you know, this was a woman who had perfect teeth. She had no fillings, no dental work. The only thing that was noticeable that would have been kind of that would jump out to someone if they're trying to identify her is she had a small surgical scar and it appeared that she at one point early on in her life had surgery on her appendix. What the coroner came up with was that it actually appears that she may have been struck by a car, but she also had ligature marks. And so what they think happened is that she was at one point tied up in either this person's car or tied up elsewhere. And she somehow either got out of the car or escaped from wherever she was held, being held captive. Then the person got into their car and chased after her and struck her with the car and then dumped her body along the bottom of that creek bed. They really don't know for absolute certainty that's if that's how she actually died. They just know that it was homicidal violence that did this. The ligature marks were really really indicative that she had been held captive or was kidnapped. And so that's how they leaned more towards that this was a deliberate homicide and not just like a hit and run type thing. They created like a, you know, a drawing of her, but they also ended up making a, a bust of her face and sort of put it out there. But nobody in Boulder, Colorado or the surrounding areas really recognized her. This is obviously before the internet. You couldn't put her image everywhere. This wasn't even necessarily on television. So it was, they were having a hell of a time trying to find out who she was. What's really cool though, is that the residents of Boulder, Colorado, they all kind of collectively came together. They pitched in money to buy her a burial plot and a grave marker. And they buried her under the name Jane Doe, and it just said April 1954. And it says age about 20 years, because they didn't even really know truly how old she was. They also determined that she probably was in that creek bed for maybe a couple of days. It wouldn't be until 2004 when they did some like new facial reconstructions of her. And then they would also, by the urging of a an author, actually, an author named Sylvia Pettern wrote a book called Someone's Daughter in Search of Justice for Jane Doe. And it was at her urging that she convinced the authorities in Boulder, Colorado to exhume Jane Doe's body to see if they can get anything else. And so they were able to get some DNA from her just so they could put her DNA in the database to see if maybe it'll match a relative and you never know. But this is way back in 2004 before the forensic genealogy thing became a th like the thing it is now. The author of this book speculated at one point that the Jane Doe may be a missing woman named Catherine Ferrand Dyer. She actually went missing from Denver, Colorado in 1954, and she bore a striking resemblance to the image that she had of the Jane Doe. Everything lined up, like when she disappeared, how long she had been dead, it all was very like, this could be her. But in July of 2009, Sylvia gets an email that says, you need to be sitting down when I tell you this. Catherine is in Australia. 
I know this because she's living in my house. Apparently this woman was caring for an elderly woman and this caretaker came across like an address book or some kind of book that this elderly woman had and she found the name of Catherine in that book and so she typed in the name on Google and she came across some stories about this missing woman. I guess she knew the woman not as Catherine but as Barbara but apparently her real real name was Emily but it was confirmed that this elderly woman who was now in the care of a caretaker was the supposedly missing Catherine Dyer. She never disappeared in terms of like foul play. She basically ran out on her own and eventually found her way all the way to Australia where she continued living her life. And so they knew that the Jane Doe obviously was not her. A few months after that, the author gets another email that says, I think that Jane Doe just might be my great aunt. This woman who emailed her said that she was doing some research, I guess, on like her family. And she came across, during this research, she came across these stories about these this Jane Doe and she came across a description of her. Now, this woman knew that her, her loved one had been missing since 1954. She never met her, obviously, because she wasn't born yet. But she heard through the grapevine through her family that her great aunt had a uh, surgery on her appendix and she had this, so she had a scar. And she learned through her family that the last time anyone had seen her great aunt was in 1954. So this woman tells the author that her great aunt's name was Dorothy Gay Howard. Dorothy Gay Howard was born on March 26, 1936. She was the oldest of three kids. When she was 15, she actually got married uh, with her parents' approval, but that ended in divorce, I guess, a few months later. Then, Dorothy ended up getting married a second time to somebody else unbeknownst to her family, uh, but that marriage also ended in divorce. At the time of her disappearance, Dorothy Gay Howard was just 18 years old. Now, Dorothy, or who she would go by dot to everyone, uh, she had sometimes not ran away. Well, she, I guess you can say ran away. She left the family for decent periods of time. It wasn't completely out of the norm, especially when she met the second husband. That's exactly what she did. But after that second marriage, she was brought back to her home, which was actually in Phoenix, Arizona, and by her father. And she ended up getting a job as a nanny. And around the last time she was seen, Dorothy was supposed to pick up her, one of her sisters to go take her to a movie on a particular day, but Dorothy never showed up. And this kind of like upset the sisters, like, I can't believe she did this. But they didn't really think a whole lot of it. I guess they would a few days later, discovered that Dorothy had plans to maybe visit her aunt in uh, Denver, Colorado, but they weren't positive. But they just assumed that Dorothy did what she had done before. Maybe she met another man and she just suddenly took off and got married and moved with them. And they kind of just figured that Dorothy just didn't want to talk to them ever again. But now fast forwarding um, all the way until 2009, when this woman reaches out to the author, the author gets her in touch with the police there in Boulder, Colorado. And this woman gives her DNA just to see if they could find a match because they had pulled DNA from the Jane Doe in 2004. They compare them and they confirm that the Jane Doe is related to this woman who says that Dorothy is her great aunt. At that point, they now can say they know who Jane Doe is, and it's definitely Dorothy Gay Howard. That entire time, her family thought that she just sort of ran out on them. She had been murdered, literally days after they last saw her. She had been thrown into a ditch, and she was sitting in a gravesite marked Jane Doe for 50 over 50 years. Police did suspect, and they still strongly suspect, that Dorothy Gay Howard may have actually been a victim of a serial killer called the Glamour Girl Slayer. His name was Harvey Glattman. Harvey Glattman had killed at least three women, and there's actually a pretty infamous photo that Harvey Glattman himself took of one of his victims. And it's a photo with her, and I'm showing it, but the photo with her with a rope in her mouth and she's bound. And this the photo was taken literally hours before he had raped and then beat and murdered this woman. At the time of Dorothy Gay Howard's 
murder. He was living in that Denver, Boulder, Colorado area under the care of his mother. He had been released from prison for other crimes. He had actually sexually assaulted women in New York. He drove at the time a 1951 Dodge Coronet and I guess the coroner and the police were able to determine that the car that Dorothy was likely hit by was a car that was very similar to this type of car, if not the same one. I don't know how they determined that, especially back in 1954, but I guess they did. He was known to always tie up his victims, and there was evidence that Dorothy was definitely tied up at one point. And so they believe that she may have escaped from him, and then he chased her down and hit her with the car to kill her. Harvey Glattman would end up being convicted of three murders that he had actually committed in California, which one of the women was the ones in that photo, and he was executed in 1959. And so if he was the one to kill Dorothy, obviously, I mean, given his age anyway at this point, he probably wouldn't have been alive anyway, but he'll never face justice for doing something to her if it was him. But they honestly don't know for sure if it was him. It's really just speculation. They don't have genuine proof of it. They're trying to gather proof because they still want the answer. They want to know if it was him or if it wasn't him, maybe her killer is still out there. He may be probably pretty damn old, if not dead, but you never know. But as it stands now, Dorothy Howard, she was murdered in 1954 by a ghost, by an unknown assailant, by a faceless man. It may have been this serial killer, it may not have been. Most of Dorothy's immediate family from back then, unfortunately, has passed away, so none of them even knew that she was identified. Sadly, Dorothy Gay Howard, I mean, let's just be honest here, let's be real, it could happen, but the odds are is that Dorothy Howard, while she finally is laid to rest properly in her own grave uh, back at home, and her family was able to get her back and pay their respects, which was amazing. I mean, it's it's great that they finally got that level of closure, but in the end, Dorothy Howard will likely never get the justice that she rightfully deserved. But that is it for this case, true crime, a Rooney Dooney Dingleberry Dongs. I hope you found it interesting. As usual, uh, please subscribe to the channel if you like true crime. I tell a lot of true crime stories here every week. I also tell short form true crime stories every single day over on two different TikTok pages. The links to those are gonna pop up here at some point in the beginning at the end of the video, but they're also in the link tree in the description of this video below. Also in that link tree, you will find my merch store. We have like t-shirts and hoodies. We do ship all over this entire planet. So feel free to check it out if you want to. And then lastly, if there's a case you want me to cover, just send me a super quick email. My email is listed below. Email me just the name of the case or the person where it happened and when it happened, I'll add it to the list. The list is over 6,200 names long. I pick the cases I cover each time at random, so I cannot promise you when I'll cover that case, but it will happen at some point eventually. At any rate, that is it for this video, and so until the next case, we shall ta-ta, we shall ta-ta, we shall ta-ta for now. True crime, Arodis. <laughs> Oops.